Thank you, Dave, and uh, good morning to everyone. And on behalf of the CU System President, Bruce Benson, and myself, I want to thank Rick George for his work and leadership in recruiting an outstanding coach who will lead our football program into the future. Rick did an extensive national search, and I'm pleased to welcome Coach Mel Tucker to campus. I had the chance to uh, speak with Coach Tucker earlier this week and realized we have some things in common. Not only do we share a passion for the success of our student athletes, but we both grew up in Ohio and we were both at the Ohio State University. Although when I was there, it wasn't the, it was just Ohio State <laughs> University. Exactly and I'm pleased to uh, welcome him to our Buff family. I also want to thank our student athletes for the way that they've handled this transition. I'm certain Coach Tucker will have an immediate positive impact on our football program, on our university, and as a leader of young men. A successful football program benefits the entire university. It raises our profile in demonstrating that it's possible to have athletes succeed on the field and in the classroom, which is a key area of focus for us. Our athletics overall and our football program have steadily shown improvement in athletes' GPAs and overall graduation rates. Athletics are a part of the entire campus and part of our students' college experience. With the proven leadership of Coach Tucker, we look forward to getting back to consistent winning seasons and major bowl appearances. We have the infrastructure and many fine student athletes in place for success. Our new facilities give us an edge on recruiting, and I believe we're prepared to go to new heights. Together as Buffs, we will continue to build our football program on the field, in the classroom, with the goal of graduating young men of character. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our athletic director, Rick George. We, we, we met with the staff earlier and they, they applauded, but it wasn't for me, it was for Mel. Um, but I want to welcome all of you and, and, and say thank you for being here uh, today. Um, I'm really excited and proud to be able to share uh, this announcement uh, with Buffs and with all of you. Uh, today. Uh, before I give my remarks, I do want to thank the Chancellor. Um, his counsel and guidance through this process has been uh, incredibly helpful to me. I uh, also want to thank Sue Sharkey and our Board of Regents. Sue's with us today. Uh, her support for what we're doing uh, in our athletic department uh, is extremely invaluable to us. And I also want to give a shout out to my wingman, Lance Carl. Uh, who is with me every step of the way through this process of, of hiring what I think is going to be one of the great coaches uh, in Colorado history. Um, also, before I give my remarks, I want to introduce Mel's family, a fellow Illini, JoJo, um, their sons, Christian and Joseph. Welcome. Glad you're here. Welcome to the Buff family. It's a great day um, for Colorado, and it's a great day in our history um, because we get to introduce the 26th head football coach of this great institution. I said to you all uh, th two and a half weeks ago that I thought this was the best job in America. I still believe that today, but what's most important is I think we hired the best coach in America, and I'm really excited about that. When we started this process a little over two weeks ago, we said we were going to be thorough which we were, we were going to be efficient, and we were going to hire the very best coach for the University of Colorado. And today I'm thrilled and excited to say that we hired the very best coach that we could for CU. He's a perfect fit for our program. I'm excited about his ability to lead this program to greatness in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead. He's been in this business over 25 years, 23 as a coach. Uh, and he played um, at the University of Wisconsin. He's been a part of two national championships. That's where I aspire this program to be. Those are the expectations uh, that we have for this program is it's about winning championships. He's experienced success at the highest level, uh, and that's the level that we want to be at at the University of Colorado. As you know, he played defensive back uh, at the University of Wisconsin. He's been an assistant, an assistant head coach, a defensive coordinator, on some of the best defenses in college football. 
I believe you win championships by having great defenses, and I'm thrilled that he's going to be a part of this. He's also worked a number of years in the NFL as an assistant, as a coordinator, assistant head coach, interim head coach. He brings incredible pedigree and experience to the head coaching role. Nick Saban's hired him three times, probably a reason for that because he's one of the best in the business. He's hired him three times. That speaks volumes. And he's been alongside Kirby Smart for the last three years playing in the national championship game this past year. Um, I was there, but no, I wasn't recruiting him for the job. Um, but reading an article that they talked about Mel, Kirby Smart said this. He said, Mel's a great leader. He commands great respect. Players really follow Mel's lead. He does a tremendous job of game planning, X and Oing, calling the game. But more important than that, he's very a lo loyal soldier that helps guys out. If guys are struggling or their confidence is struggling, he's able to pep them up. They follow his lead. That's what I want in a leader at Colorado. What he brings to Colorado is a, a toughness, a discipline, an accountability, and a real passion for his players. We spent a lot of time at his home when we were talking about his passion to make sure that his student athletes were prepared for that next stage in life. And that was an important part of our conversation. Academics are very important to him. He takes great pride in developing young people to be the best versions of themselves. And again, we did a lot of research. One of the other articles I read, one of his student athletes said, I've grown a lot under Coach Mel Tucker. I think he's an awesome coach even a better person. I would agree with that. Just his defensive style, the way he calls plays, and the way he cares about his players, that speaks volumes. I think he's a great guy and I love him. That's the kind of coach that I want around our players. And that's the coach that we're getting. But I did forget to mention that he's a great recruiter. And he's recruited nationally. He's brought in some of the great uh, players uh, at the schools that he's been at. Uh, he's a proven recruiter, and I'm excited about what he will bring and add to the tradition uh, of the Colorado Buffaloes. As I said earlier, this is a great day for CU. I can honestly tell you I've never been more energized, more excited in my professional's career than I am today to announce this guy. Um, Mel Tucker is going to be our 26th head coach. I'm honored to introduce him. Uh, can't wait for him to get started. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, our new head football coach, Mel Tucker. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> That's a hard act to follow. You see the number, of, the amount of notes that he has, and you see what I have here. So we'll see what happens. He tried to tell a joke to start the deal off, and no one laughed. Uh, so, but. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> but I'm going to tell a little bit of a joke, but it's kind of serious. I said I've got a, a few prepared remarks, and the rest of it is going to be from the heart. And I told uh, Lance Carl, I said, if I start to ramble, just start to play the music like the Grammys, and I'll start to wrap it up. So we're not laughing at that either. That's okay. It's a hard, right. it's a hard crowd. Yes, yeah, it's a rough crowd. Okay. Most people uh, smile. <laughs> well, um, First and foremost, I'm, I'm honored and privileged and proud to be here. Um, I've waited for this opportunity for my entire career. Um, I need to thank uh, some people, um, Bruce Benson and his wife Marcy, who I had the pleasure of meeting. Um, they're just tremendous people and they're supporting us 100%. And I really like to thank them. Uh, Phil, we're on first name basis. Yes. Yeah. Phil and his wife Yvonne, um, fellow Ohioans, uh, I'd like to thank you and I appreciate your support. Uh, Rick George is the man. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be just like him. <laughs> and his wife Nancy. They gotta laugh. Yeah, he's, uh, he's outstanding. And when I met him, uh, it just felt it just felt right. I felt like it was the right fit. Um, I know that we're going to do great great things here. Um, I also feel like I have to, and I really want to thank some of um, my former um, coaches, head coaches that I worked for that helped shape who I am today. Um, first and foremost, 
uh, Coach Nick Saban, who was a mentor to me. He's uh, been like a father figure for me in the in the world of football, and um, he gave me my first opportunity to coach in 1997 at Michigan State, and I'm forever indebted to him. Uh, also, uh, Jim Trussell, uh, who um, means so much to me. He was a role model for me. Um, and I was on his first staff at Ohio State. We did great things. We won a national championship in our second season there. And we're still great friends to this day. And he taught me, he taught me so much about not just uh, coaching, but about, about life. Um, Kirby Smart, um, I love Kirby. We, um, we went to Athens to do something special. There's some unfinished business there, but uh, I think they're well on their way. Um, he gave me an opportunity to work with, alongside him, and um, I, I thank him for that, and I love him for that. I also want to thank um, players that I've coached. Um, sometimes uh, in some of these press conferences that I've seen, you forget about the, the, the guys that you've that have played for you. And good players make you a good coach. And that's what motivates me each and every day is to, is to know that I have the ability and the opportunity to teach, motivate, and develop young men on and off the field. And I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be standing here today if it weren't for, for the great um, young men that I was able to work with at Georgia and all of the other um, places that I've been, and including the NFL. Sometimes you learn more um, from your players than you learn from anyone else. Um, and then um, last but not least, I'd like to thank my parents. Um, my parents are in Cleveland still, um, Mel Sr., who uh, raised me as a football, as a football man. He played football and baseball at the University of Toledo. He's in the Hall of Fame there. I owe him everything. My parent, my mom, uh, Brenda, um, the, the tremendous sacrifices that they made for myself and my two brothers. We were always first um, with them. And I, I can never, ever repay them. Um, but what I will do is I will try to pay forward. Um, Rick, uh, thank my, Rick mentioned my wife and my two boys, and he said he was gonna do that because he knew I would forget. <laughs> but I wanna thank uh, JoJo. Uh, JoJo and I have been together for a long time, and she was uh, with me before I um, actually got into coaching. And so she knows the journey and what it's all about. And uh, Joseph, uh, my 16-year-old and Christian, my 14-year-old, um, they've been supportive of me 100% along the way. We've moved. I moved them around a little bit. Sometime in this business to move up, you got to move. And uh, I'll say this, those two boys right there are not, not easily impressed. And when we, when we uh, toured those facilities last night, they were fired up. We get back to the hotel room last night, and the boys say, yeah, are you kidding me? We can win here. I said, what do you think we're doing here? <laughs> That's why we're here. We're here to win, and we're here to win big. But so, there's, and there's too many people to thank. Um, there's just so many people, but for all that uh, are watching this press conference and may a lot watching it live and may watch it later, um, just, I want everyone to know that everyone that I've coached with, anyone that I've uh, coached for, and all the players that I've worked with over the years, um, I appreciate you, um, and I'm always here for you, and, and I love you um, with all of my heart. Getting down to football, obviously the expectations are, are high. You heard it just now. From Rick, we're here to win championships. 
uh, that's that's okay with me. Um, pressure, expectations. Um, I've never been in a game as a player or a coach that we weren't expected to win, ever. And so there's one thing that I can tell you, that there's no one uh, on this planet that can put more pressure on me than I can put on myself. The expectations that I have for this university and this program are extremely high. We're going to start working today to get this thing going in the direction that it needs to go. I met with the players this morning. We had a really good conversation. I had them to myself. And sometimes you just know. And I know that the young men in that room, they're hungry. They want to win. They want to compete for championships. They want to be relevant. And I promise them that if they follow the process and they buy in and they do the things that we're going to ask them, ask them to do, uh, that we will achieve at a high level and they will reach their full potential and we'll be able to compete for championships and be in that conversation year in and year out. As you walk through the facilities and you meet the people here, um, the leadership that's in place here, the, the question um, that, comes to mind, that comes to mind is, why not us? Why not the University of Colorado? Why not the Buffs? Why not CU? There is no reason why we shouldn't be able to compete at a championship level and win championships. It's been done here before. This is a great place. It's a great university, great tradition, great facilities. The time is now in my mind. As a, as a young coach, I was always told, Mel, one day you're going to be a head coach. And then as I got older, they said, Mel, you're going to be a head coach, but you got to take, make sure you take the right job. Make sure you take the right opportunity. Make sure it's the right fit for you. And when I met with Rick, there was no doubt in my mind that this, this was the right fit. This was the right opportunity. This was the right time for me to make the move, to become a head coach, to go to a place where I know we should win, go to a place where I know we have support, go to a place where I know that the expectations are high. That's what I want. I want the ex expectations to be high. I want people to be energized. That's what, that's what it's all about. That's why we're in this game. We're not, in it, we're not in it just to be ordinary or to be regular or just be good enough. We're in this to be the very best that we can be. And that's going to be our goal each and every day. I talked to some of uh, the athletic department staff uh, just a bit ago, and I, and I expressed to them that I know that we're all in this together. And I know that everything that I do, every decision that I make, uh, directly or indirectly affects everyone here. And so that is a huge responsibility. But I embrace that responsibility and I relish that responsibility because I know what it takes to get the job done. And I can't wait to roll up my sleeves with the staff that I'm going to assemble and get to work and get this thing done. We're going to lay the foundation. We're going to do it right. We're going to build it the right way. Because if you build it the right way, that means you can sustain it. The staff, I can't promise you that I'm going to bring in every guru, uh, X and O guy uh, that there is. The one thing that I promise Rick is that first and foremost, we'll bring in, we will have coaches on our staff that have the highest in integrity and the highest amount of character. They care about young men, and that are going to love young men, and they're going to treat these young men like our, like our own, like our own sons. We'll have that. Obviously, our staff will be extremely competent in the X's and O's, 
and there will be relentless recruiters. Uh, what that staff makeup will be um, remains to be seen, but time is of the essence, and we'll get moving in the right direction from a staff standpoint right now. So what, is, what are we going to look like? What's it going to look like when, you, when, you, um, when you're in the seats in the stadium, in a tremendous venue? What's it going to look like on television? You're going to see a team that has a tremendous foundation. First and foremost, we will be best conditioned. In order, in order to win big, you've got to play harder and you've got to play longer. We will be technically sound and fundamentally sound. It all comes back to technique and fundamentals. It just, it's just not about the X's and O's. We'll always be able to rely on our technique and fundamentals on both sides of the ball and special teams. We will play smart. What does playing smart, smart mean? We won't beat ourselves. We'll be, we'll be uh, prepare for all of the special situations that come up in games. We'll, we'll be able to uh, come through in the clutch, in the red zone, short yardage, goal line, two-point plays, two-minute, all those critical areas. We'll be a smart football team. We'll play fast. How do you play fast? You recruit fast players, first and foremost. <laughs> But players play fastest when they know what to do. Players play fastest when they know what to do. And our players will know what to do. And they will play fast. And last but not least, our team, we will be physical. My dad always told me that the name of the game, the name of the game of football is HIT, H-I-T, HIT. That's the name of the game. And there's always a place on the football field for someone who will hit. And he's told me that since I was three years old. And so physicality, controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, being violent on special teams, flying around and enjoying that, that's what you're going to see. That's what it looks like. That's the picture in my mind. And that's what I talked to the players about this morning. And from what I can see, they were all in. And so am I. So, again, I'm going to wrap it up. I think the music is starting to play. You had an awful lot of that small piece of paper. That's right. That's right. That's right. The fine, okay, so the fine the print. Right now will be is wait to get the microphone so you ask the questions so the people at home can hear them. And also, mm -hmm. since he's meeting you for the first time, when you ask your first question, please identify yourself and where you're from. So who wants the first question? Hey, Coach. Okay. Brian Howell from the Bull, the Daily Camera. Brian. Good okay. to meet you. Um, nice to meet you. So, obviously, you know, you're know you coming to this place that uh, you've played here once before. Uh, I at, at Try Wisconsin. to forget that. So, I, I know not great memories, but, uh, you know, having seen this firsthand, what this can be at, at its height, um, did that kind of memory come back to you as you're going through this process and think, okay, we can get back to that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, re I remember vividly uh, how dominant uh, – Colorado football was at that time. And um, it was a team that you didn't want to play. And that's the team that we're going to have. We want to have a team that changes the way people think. And when it's all said and done, when they leave the, when they leave the field, we want them to think, never want to play that team again. And that's the type of team that we had here in the early 90s, and it's, it's, uh, it's very, very possible. This is a no-excuse program as of right now. Coach, over here. Uh, Patrick Saunders with the Denver Post. Patrick, thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Um, question for you. When did you first think that you wanted to be a football coach after you were a player, and what were the basic reasons you wanted to transform from being a, a player into a coach? Well, um, I always knew that I wanted that that um, I wanted to 
be a coach in some capacity. When I graduated in May of 95, I actually volunteered at my high school, uh, football and, uh, and basketball, and I saw the impact that, that, uh, that I was able to make with those young men. When, um, when you give them some advice, you, you show them a way, and they apply it, and they get immediate results, and you know you got them, right there, that's probably the most rewarding thing as a coach. My dad was my first coach. He coached me in baseball, and I, I think that coaching is a very, very honorable, honorable profession. And so, um, uh, coaching is in, actually has been in my blood for for quite some time. Coach Rod Mackey from Nine News. First of all, welcome, welcome to Boulder. I uh, thank you. Glad you to be here. Your staff, and you mentioned recruiting. When you look at the current staff, obviously there's a couple buffs former buffs on the team that, that have a, a great tradition with here, know what Boulder's about. How much do you weigh that knowing what kind of an impact not only they have on the field, but with recruiting and their ties <coughs> to the state? Yeah, I think that's important. Uh, every coach on your staff uh, brings something different and something unique uh, to your program. And um, I'm going to meet with um, going to meet with the staff starting today. It's going to be a meet and greet. I'm not going to make any decisions on, on staff today or probably even this weekend, um, but it is, a, it is a factor. Coach, Matt Stevens, Denver Post. Hey, Matt. Uh, recruiting for CU, the pipelines have loved it. often been out west, mm -hmm. not necessarily where you have as much experience recruiting. Right. Do you intend to keep those pipelines or maybe blow those up and go back to places you're more comfortable? No, we plan to keep those pipelines and actually enhance those pipelines and, and um, make them even stronger. Uh, the West Coast, uh, California, Texas, uh, Louisiana, critical. And then a program such as this uh, has to recruit nationally. And let's not forget our own state where there's tremendous players here that we have to make sure we keep them keep them home, and we'll do everything we can to do that. Jordan Rank from Denver 7. Congratulations, Coach Tucker. OK, thank you. You talked about toughness and physicality. That's not necessarily the reputation of this conference. How do you blend that with creating an offense, too, that can you know, play this fast, up-tempo game we see in college? But it's, it's, it's going to be the way we live. We're going to live tough. We're going to eat tough. We're going to practice tough. And it's, it's going to be who we are. It's going to be part of our culture. Um, there's no self-imposed limitations here. And what, what has been in the past or what is, what's around us in the rest of the conference has no bearing on what we are and what we're going to be. And so, um, you know, I talked to the team about that. I think that resonated with them. You know, it's the uh, talk about the illusion of choice. Um, there really is no choice. In order to play this game, you got to be tough and you got to be physical. Coach uh, Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, you mentioned in your opening comments that uh, as soon as you started talking to Rick, you felt like right away this was uh, the right fit for you. You've been waiting for the right fit, the right job. I guess why did you feel that way? What was appealing about this as opposed to maybe other jobs you, you've kicked the tires on recently? Well, I think uh, first and foremost, in order to have success at this level and at the top uh, where the best compete, success is measured in inches. And in order to, to have a chance to be great, you have to have um, great working relationships with everyone in leadership positions. Everyone has to be on the same page, uh, moving in the same direction with the same vision. And Rick's vision um, was my vision for what the University of Colorado football should be. And so I knew right away that it was the, the right fit for me. Hey, Coach, Connor Street, KOA News Radio. What did you learn about being in charge of a program, being the head guy from Jim Trestle or Nick Saban? Yeah, um, I learned a lot, quite a few things. I learned from, uh, I learned from Romeo Cornell. I learned from Mike Malarkey. I learned from the late Terry Hepner and, uh, his, uh, and, and Jane. Um, I learned from my 
head high school coach who was uh, starting a program. I learned from Barry Alvarez. Well, I was in his first recruiting class. We were one and ten, one and ten, one and ten, five and six, five and six Rose Bowl. And you come in with a plan, and you work the plan, and it's a process. And you'll hear me use that word process quite a bit. Um, everyone wants to win, but how do you win? And there's a process of winning. And if you do things the right way each and every day, and the standard is high, the expectations are high, the environment is right, um, then you can achieve success. But there is a process. We'll work that process day in and day out. And all of the, the, the great coaches I've been around, they've had a plan, they've had a process, they've implemented, implemented the process, and they haven't wavered and have gotten great results. Hey, Coach, Adam Munster Tiger from 24 7 Sports. On the subject, uh, subject of recruiting, what are the key qualities, uh, components you look for in recruits when you're out there on the recruiting trail? Well, obviously, um, you, you want guys that can uh, win one-on-one. -on -one. They can win their box, whatever position that is. And so um, the evaluation uh, process is critical. Uh, we, and it takes talent to, to evaluate talent. And so we first have to identify the players. We have to identify the players. We have to evaluate them. And then at that point, once we decide that these are guys, they can, they can be difference makers. They can help us reach our goals, these young men. They can help us win championships. And it's all about marketing at that point. And so um, we know what we're looking for. We know what it takes to compete and to win, what type of player. And it's not always all about talent. It's talent and character. And so um, that's, a big, that's a big part of it. We know what we're looking for, and we're going to go get it. Hey, Coach. Mark Kisla, Denver Post. How you doing? You said your father was your first coach. He was. And you said Nick Saban was the coach that got you into this crazy business. And you've said a lot that uh, football is a game of tough. Who is a tougher coach, your dad or Nick Saban? <laughs> <laughs> well, my dad's my dad, so, <laughs> you know. You yeah, I got to go there. I mean, I've, all of the, all of the um, most all of the coaches that I've worked for or played for were extremely tough. Um, but, um, however, uh, tough, being tough on players is not a bad thing. You know, if you have the two components of love and discipline, I think they understand where the toughness is coming from and why it's important. And Nick Saban or my dad or Barry Alvarez or Jim Trussell, there was always that element of love, discipline, uh, culture of accountability. And players buy into that because really, at the end of the day, that's what they want. That's what they need. And that's off the field as well. You know, it's, it's, it's not always easy for these young men to come in, come in and, and to uh, acclimate themselves to football, ac academics, the social aspects of college. Um, first and foremost, um, you know, we have to make sure these guys get a great education and that they graduate. I mean, that's the least we can do. That's the least we can do. And so um, I tell parents and tell kids it's my job to, it's my responsibility, responsibility to make sure that, that uh, you, get your, you, you get your first job, whether it's in the NFL or in the business world. And so we're committed to these, to these young people to do that. And there will be an element of toughness to it, and, uh, but they're going to like it. Hi, Coach. Nick Stelzner, Big Ten football dude. Okay, Obviously, Nick. selling a student athlete is one thing. How do you sell mom and dad in the living room? Well, I, uh, first and foremost, you have to find out what's most important. What's important to uh, the young man and what's important to the parents. Um, and once you identify that, um, 
either you can you can um, you can satisfy those expectations or you can't. University of Colorado can satisfy all expectations from a parent standpoint, academics, uh, coaching staff, environment, support, uh, safety, medical staff. We we have everything that that a parent would want for their child, for their son. And so it's just a matter of educating them. Um, you, you're always marketing, you're always selling. And at some point, a decision has to be made. And if you've done a, if you've done a good job uh, making sure that the parents understand what you have to offer, um, then they'll realize that the University of Colorado is actually their dream school. Well, you hit the ground running here, and you've got obviously coaches. You got to figure out. You got to figure out where you're going to live and all the different things. And obviously, you've got. I'm going to live with Rick George for probably. A, <laughs> you don't. Probably a day. His his place is big enough. We've I've, all been, been, I've been over there. He's got okay. he's got a little room. Yeah, you're, you'll be just fine. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't overcharge you for rent. All right. <laughs> Um, you've got a recruiting signing day coming up here. That, that changes everything, so you've got to worry about that recruiting aspect of, of kind of building your talent pool. But the first recruiting job you've got to do is to those young men that you faced this morning. Right. And I know you gave them a message, but how do you get those guys? Because next season, we've all seen that 2019 schedule. It's a great schedule. And how do you convince those guys to buy in so that you're successful when you walk out in that field next fall? Well, you're exactly right. We all talk about recruiting the next class, but uh, you have to recruit your players every single day. Um, every opportunity that you have to touch them, you see them in the hall, you see them in the locker room, you see them on campus, wherever you see them, it's an opportunity to build trust, to build relationships, and to recruit, and to, and to push the vision, uh, articulate the vision of where we're going. and. Uh, what we can be and what, what we want to be and how it affects them individually is, is very important. Football is, a, football is the ultimate team sport, obviously, but each one of these young men have individual goals. So how can we help you reach your individual goals? And um, that's, that, that, is, that's, that, that is recruiting. And uh, I believe in recruiting uh, every day um, in the building and also on the road. Last question from the group, please. Coach. Monica Costello, Monica. the Associated Press. <laughs> the. <laughs> um, to build a little on what Mark said, um, this team uh, had a really tough year, starting out so well and then being uh, slowly, slowly losing, and uh, it was very hard on them. Not recruiting them so much, but how do you build them up? How do you get them to a place where they were as confident as they were in the beginning of the year? Yeah, well, I think it's all in the preparation. You know, when it's, uh, when it's time to compete on the field, on game day, um, there's a difference between being, being, uh, being anxious and feeling pressure. When you're anxious, is because you you know you feel that you're not prepared. The pressure is normal. Pressure is good because if when you when you're under pressure, you feel pressure. That means you care. So our guys will be prepared. They'll know that they'll be prepared because of our off-season conditioning program, because of what we do in spring ball, the way we practice, um, the way we condition them mentally, make sure that their mental disposition is where it needs to be to compete at a high level, and we'll build them up. And, um, you know, a, a guy, a person can go two weeks on one compliment. So when they, when they, when they do it wrong, we'll, we'll point that out. But when they do it right, we're going to go nuts and let them know they did it right. And that's how you build people up, and as opposed to tearing them down. And so uh, I'm a big believer in that. Um, we'll be demanding, um, but we're also uh, going to teach. We're going to motivate, and we're going to and we're going to develop our players. 
And when they step on the field, um, they will feel the pressure, but they won't be anxious. Uh, no one asked the obvious. How did you get hooked up with Nick Saban to begin with? I thought that was the last question there. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled rank. Okay, you pulled rank. Uh, Nick's uh, Coach Saban recruited me in high school. Uh, when I was in high school, I got a, I was I was at home one one evening, and the phone rang. Uh, I picked it up and he said, hey, "This is Nick Saban um, from the Houston Oilers." 